Welcome, laboratorians. Lab Insider celebrates the lab profession, but there comes a time to pay a special tribute to those professionals who are all over the world. Many of you, of course, can't be with your families during the holiday season. You're stuck at work. We understand. And what better way to honor you than to show you the latest and greatest in progress surrounding the lab profession of the past year. New and exciting developments in science, technology, and workflows have given those in the lab peace of mind, new prospects, and an easier job. So let's find out how this last year has been a bounce back into the good times. So what are you waiting for? Let's explore the latest and greatest advances of 2021 and how they impact the lab of the future. Time to dive in. Electric cars, or EVs, they are the future. And if you're not driving one now, you might as well be in the next 10 years. But not all innovations in EVs are done at large universities or corporate labs. We're going to examine just some of the facilities involved with experimenting these upcoming EVs in their labs and garages. I mean, we're talking electric vehicles, and that includes serial and produced and open platforms, electric vehicle charging infrastructure, lab space and interfaces, which means dedicated space and interface with other labs and manufacturing facilities, as well as metered equipment and databases for logging equipment in vehicles, infrastructure and back-end systems, and let's not forget equipment testing. That needs to match the highest EV standards. Before an EV can be introduced to the public, we'll need it to be fully tested in the lab and on the track. And that means batteries must be reliable and safe and that the car performs to consumer and manufacturer standards. I mean, it all has to come at a reasonable price at the end of the day. And that's a major commitment. But nearly every manufacturer in the world is working on it in their labs as we speak. In fact, you might have even heard about the creation process for the Tesla series, the Lamborghini Terzo Milenio, or the more modestly priced Chevrolet Volt. These are what's called extended range electric vehicles, or e-revs. GM, General Motors, for one, pours all their manufacturing, marketing, and marketing power into one of these cars since way back in 2007. Okay, these other companies, they want to keep their cards close to the chest and control as many parts as possible. So companies like Nissan, for instance, they're, they're willing to invest in the labs needed to create them. This one has its own on-site battery lab in Japan, which is currently researching power sources for its full electric vehicles and hybrids. In this case, engineers will work with smaller, prototype versions of the full-size lithium-ion car batteries to determine their capacity to store energy. They use these smaller prototypes to assess the safety of various materials used to create the electric reactions that power the car. Space, the private sector's infinite frontier. Sky's the limit, so they say. But where private companies are taking their rockets to the skies, Government agencies can focus their technologies on research here at home. Private firms are planting their flags all over the space sector, from high-profile businesses such as SpaceX or Virgin Galactic, to just some of the thousands of small businesses that provide elements for NASA, Roscosmos, the European Space Agency, and every other space program on the planet. And that includes India and China and Korea, so how come private companies have taken such a bold leap for humankind and equity, of course? Well, lower costs and faster production times, economies of scales have even beaten some of the functions of government space agencies. The interesting thing here is that that doesn't even seem to bother them a single bit. In fact, while many have levied criticism against privatized space exploration, it also gives room for more philanthropic actions by government space agencies. Plus, the benefits from increased space exploration are so far, they're only a good thing. I mean, why shouldn't we encourage this development if the process is net ethical in the end and it benefits everybody? I mean, recognizing this reduced cost of space exploration in private companies, NASA's budget has actually shifted to relying on private companies. According to the Council on Foreign Relations, such technologies have far-reaching benefits on Earth as well. Past developments include communication satellites that we know and love, 
as well as refinements in artificial hearts, improved mammograms, laser eye surgery, thermoelectric coolers for microchips, high temperature lubricants, carbon nanotubes. Yes, those are all scientific things, but there are also all kinds of household products that have benefited too. But now for the challenge. Let's just see how our society regulates and avoids the problems from an increasingly crowded orbit. I mean, we're talking about collisions here. Collisions of satellites and space junk. We'll also need to take a look at minimizing the environmental impact of satellites and into efforts to build a reusable launcher for small payloads. And let's not forget the challenge of assembling, maintaining and repairing these objects in space, the developments uh, that robotics could help with. Look, there's a lot to unpack here. There's a lot to do. Sending repairmen or robots up into space. The future is endless, just like the universe. Ooh, microscopy. Let's get a glimpse at what we've never been able to see before. The goal of any laboratory microscope is to produce high quality, clear images. Now, that can be done using an optical microscope, which uses light to generate the image or perhaps a scanning or transmission electron microscope, which uses electrons, or a scanning probe microscope using a probe. With its microscope, Tyler Cocker's team is using light and electrons to study materials with an unparalleled intimacy and resolution. The researchers can actually see atoms and measure their quantum features within samples. This could very well become a building block of quantum computing and help build next generation solar cells. Microscopy is the main technique used to visualize and study the structure and function of cells. The impact of optical and electron microscopy techniques is enormous in all fields of biomedical research. It is possible that different research areas rely on microscopy in all sorts of ways that we've never even imagined. The main aim for the instrument is what's known as scanning tunneling microscope or an STM. That brings a very sharp tip or probe extremely close to the specimen being studied without even touching it. Even though the tip and the sample aren't in contact, electrons can still jump or tunnel from the tip to the sample. By recording how the electrons tunnel, for example, the microscope builds high resolution images of the sample and its properties. What Cocker and his team did was combine STM with ultra short pulses of laser light. Now that lets them bring the STM's tip even closer to the sample. Thanks to this, they can extract more detailed information from a sample than ever imagined. It's almost like zooming in physically or bringing the tip closer. According to him, of course. And should we be excited? Well, according to the US Navy, yes, we should. They've earmarked millions of dollars in funding for this project. Tyler Cocker and his team are also excited. Now, they've been subject to many papers and prizes, but they're already looking ahead. His team is already working on going from still images to movies of samples, showing how electrons move within the ribbons as the nanomaterial absorbs light. The researchers are also building a second microscope with support from a Department of Defense grant awarded in June, meaning the only two microscopes like this in the US will be available at this one single university. Now, this paper is exciting, but according to Cocker, it's only the first step. In his belief, he thinks it's gonna open up a world of possibilities. So watch this space. Automation and robotization in labs. That's right, researchers have developed a breakthrough robotic lab assistant just in time for social distancing. They're able to move around a lab and conduct scientific experiments just like a human does. Designed by scientists from the UK's University of Liverpool, this bot isn't completely autonomous. It of course still needs to be programmed to know the location of lab equipment and understand the experiments. It can't design them but it works almost non-stop. It only needs about two hours to recharge, just like a human might. And just that itself will allow scientists to automate time-consuming and tedious research they probably wouldn't otherwise have time for. Scary evenings? Yeah, that might be a problem, but the robot can work even in the dark, thanks to laser-based LiDAR navigation sensors. 
For its showcase research, the robot was tasked with finding substances that can speed up chemical reactions and create hydrogen from light and water. Wow! Now that is an area of research that's useful in many industries, especially green energy production. Okay, so it's not completely autonomous, but it does attempt some critical thinking. It was programmed with the basic parameters of the experiment, but used algorithms to decide how to change 10 different variables, such as concentration and ratio of chemical reagents. Over an eight day period, the machine carried out 688 experiments, and that was to find out how to create more effective reactions. It mixed samples in glass vials, exposed them to light, and analyzed the results using gas chromatography. Today, Scientists need to limit their lab time and maintain social distancing. So who's there to fill the gaps? Yes, the robot scientist. According to one of the researchers behind the project, it doesn't get tired and it works around the clock, even on the holidays. Now that's good news. But on a more serious note, he said that the robot transformed the speed at which he could carry out the research. I mean, it can go through thousands of samples at this point. So it frees up time to focus on innovation and new solutions, thinking time, which is also important in science. So does that mean that while many scientists have been in lockdown, that the machines have swept away all the jobs? Not exactly. According to one of the designers, science will always need people. In fact, there's a boom in robotic programmers right now. So if you're looking for an opportunity, it's out there. Good luck. Extended reality is a digital infinity. Now that is an extended world and it's right in front of you. Think of it as an extension in front of your eyes. What you see with your eyes, but it's an overlay of digital information. Like think of graphics and special indicators and warning labels, useful tools that can make your work in the lab that much easier. And it's these innovative technologies that are driving digital transformation as they apply to advanced science. All new capabilities such as augmented or extended reality provide a vast opportunity for labs to leverage their tech, increase efficiencies, and improve the scientific experience with this technology to drive compliance, repeatability, and integrity. Connecting lab software systems, such as the Laboratory Information Management System, also known as LIMS, to XR devices such as Microsoft HoloLens, that lets scientists work hands-free. Laboratories can become essential to the education process in all fields of engineering and technology, and has changed the scientific laboratory landscape. The role of XR technology, meanwhile, has been placed into overdrive since the COVID-19 pandemic unfolded. But is this just a pipe dream or a novelty or a fashion? No, no, it's actually making incredible waves. The Spanish Logistics Center or the uh, Spanish Confederation of Information Technology, Communication and Electronic Companies have opened their first digital lab of its kind in the country. This innovation center aims to serve more than 700 companies to experiment with the most innovative tech, namely the use of VR. So thanks to these innovative labs, companies will have this head start in experimenting and applying immersive technologies, simulation, visual intelligence, and gamification technologies to labs. Just some of these applications, for example, could virtualize and monitor industrial labs. They could create and engage data analysis of digital twins and realize the specialized hard and soft skill training simulation modules for dive scenarios. Wow, the list is endless. It just seems that industries are already taking hold of this tech. So, the way I see it, the future looks bright and limitless. Vamanos, muchachos. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed this. These are just some of the incredible technologies powering the next generation of labs. Let's just see how these tools work to boost lab workers in the future. But meanwhile, we'd like to thank all lab workers out there for your dedication and perseverance in your jobs. Our episode is a special tribute to all lab professionals all over the world, from academia to the private sectors. Here's to a brighter future. And as always, we'll be here waiting to identify the latest in lab progress around the world. Thank you for watching and see you next time.